estimate using proportions. On Jackson's farm, they need to feed the cows 105 pounds of feed every day for every three cows. If Jackson has six cows, then how many pounds of feed does he need for the day? So we can look at this as a proportion that relates the number of cows to the pounds of feed. And it doesn't matter, we could set it up cows over pounds or pounds over cows, but just pick one and I would recommend writing it down because you wanna be consistent. However you set it up on the left side of your equal sign, you wanna set it up the same way on your right side. So let's say cows over pounds. So we know for every three cows, they need 105 pounds of feed. So to keep that same ratio, or to keep it in proportion, if he has six cows, okay, the cow number goes on the top, how many pounds of feed would that be? So there's a couple different things you could do here. You could cross multiply to solve for x, or you could say, well, six is, is three times two. So if I doubled the number on the top, I would have to do the same thing to the number on, bot on the bottom. So I need twice 105, what's 105 times two, would give me 210. So they must need 210 pounds of feed for six cows. Darren is eating candy soothers and broccoli. He likes to have a ratio of 13 to 52 junk food to healthy food. If Darren eats 23 grams of candy soothers, then how many grams of broccoli must he eat? Okay. Well, let's set up our proportion here, and let's say we're going to do junk food over healthy food. And again, you could do healthy over junk food. You just want to be consistent from the left side to the right side. Okay, well, if his ratio is, is 13 junk to 52 healthy food, grams. Well, if he ate 23 grams of candy soothers, okay, well candy, that's going to go in the junk food. We put junk on the top, so I'm going to put 23. And how many grams of broccoli must he eat? Okay, so that's going to be x. Now there's not a really obvious relationship here between 13 and 23, so in this case I would probably just cross multiply. So when we cross multiply, 13 times x is 13x, and then I cross multiply on the other side, 52 times 23 gives me 1,196. And then to solve for x, I would just divide by 13 on both sides. And that gives me x equals 92, so he has to eat 92 grams of broccoli. Dahlia has built a model of his future house. The model walls are 150 centimeters tall and the roof is 100 centimeters tall. If Dahlia knows she wants the roof on her real house to be 134 feet tall, then how high does Dahlia need to make the walls? Okay, so we want to set up a proportion that relates the wall height to the roof. So let's say walls over roof. Okay, in the model, the wall height was 150 centimeters and the roof is 100 centimeters. In the real house, it's going to be 130, the roof is going to be 134 feet. So we're relating the centimeters of the model in proportionate relationship to the feet of the real house. So notice there is a difference in units here. Okay, and we don't know that was going to be x feet for the walls. That's what we're trying to figure out. All right, so let's cross multiply 100x 
is equal to 150 times 134. That's going to give me 20,100. And then to solve for x, I need to divide by 100 on both sides. Okay, and dividing by 100 is going to reduce that by two zeros, so that's going to be 201. Okay, so the walls of the real house have to be 201 feet. Michael had a very fun party with 31 guys and 93 girls. Hoping to keep the same ratio, how many girls should Michael invite to the next party if he has already invited 79 guys? Okay, so we want to set this up as a ratio between the number of guys and the number of girls. All right, so the first party had 31 guys and 93 girls. And if he wants to keep it in the same ratio, 79 guys, okay, well, we put guys on the top on the other one, so that 79 is going to go on the top, and the number of girls would be x. Okay, let's cross multiply. 31 times x gives me 31x. 93 times 79 gives me 7,347. And then I need to divide by 31 on both sides. Okay, and that's going to leave me with 237 girls. To monitor the deer population, park rangers marked 166 deer. A month later, they flew over the park and noted 240 deer. Of the deer they saw, 160 were marked. To the nearest whole number, what is the best estimate for the deer population? Okay, so the idea in this is that they saw some of the deer when they flew over, but they might not have seen every single deer. So if we set up our ratio here, we can say how many were marked over the total number, and one side is going to be for how many they know that they marked or how many they actually have, and the other is going to be for how many they saw. Okay. So, we know that they marked 166 deer, okay, out of their total population. Now, we don't know what the total population is. We do know that when they flew over, they saw 160 marked deer out of a total of 240 deer they saw. Okay, and then let's cross multiply. X times 160 gives us 160X. 166 times 240 gives us 39,840. And we're going to divide by 160 on both sides. Okay, so 39,840 divided by 160 gives me 249.